Oh man, I've I've had too much blue cheese. Live and I'm dead. I am your host, Daniel Crozier, and I am joined by the amazing Mickey Martinez and Sam Jimenez. That was amazing. Uh, yeah, heck of an <laughs> intro. <laughs> See, I told you guys I like to get blasted with uh, with uh, fake blood and shit. <laughs> that, was, that was great. I loved it. <laughs> oh, th- thanks. Uh, Mickey, Sam, how are you guys? Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, uh, yeah, you guys are working on a project called uh, Lechuza, right? Yes. And uh, and you've got a, a Kickstarter that's live. It's a short film project, but you know, in the long run, you hope to expand it into a, a feature film, correct? Yes. That's yes. A- nice. Nice. Uh, you know, for everybody that's that's not familiar with with you, you guys as filmmakers. Let's let's go around the around the room and uh, you know talk a little bit about yourselves and your background. Uh, Mickey, can we start with you? Sure. Um, so my background is in film, mostly like distribution and producing. So I uh, used to work at a distribution company for like six years, and then I uh, I started my own distribution company where I helped like uh, filmmakers who have a, have like a really really low budget film and don't know what to do with it. And I help them get it like on streaming platforms and stuff. And then I, if, if it needs help, I like produce like the, the post-production. If it needs like help getting there and stuff. Nice. Uh, so it's usually from there, uh, but I've always been a writer and I've always liked to write things. And it's only like recently that I've really, really tried to make that happen. And okay. so, uh, so I've been, you know, like taking different meetings and trying to get this writing thing off the ground. Uh, and one of the, the ideas I had was to make this project that I've had in my, like, in the works for like a few years, and turn it into a short film, and get that short film made, and then try to get try to use that short film as like a calling card, right? And uh, and turn it into a feature film. Uh, so that's that's sort of like my history with being in the industry and stuff. And I moved here. I moved to LA from Texas, so I used to be from San Antonio, Texas. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's yeah. I moved here in 2016, so that's how long I've been doing this, really. For a few years. Nice. Uh, Sam, how about you? What's your background like? Uh, yeah, that's uh not super complicated, but uh, so I uh, I'm uh, currently in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Oh wow. Uh, Mickey and I have been like friends since high school. Oh, cool. uh, we were in like the same like media program. Uh, we, you know, made like some short movies together, uh, things like that. Uh, when he was in college, uh, we went to like different universities, but I would spend most of my weekends like at his dorm and we would just like pitch each other movie ideas. Sometimes we'd film some stuff. We, f- we filmed like, a sh- uh, we were trying to film like a feature uh like one summer uh uh that ended up sort of getting changed into like a little mini series that actually got put on uh uh uh, amazon uh and yeah like we've just kind of been like going back and forth like with this for a long time uh i'm i'm also a writer uh so we're you know like we're partners we'll send scripts you know and i'll tell mickey like "Eh, i don't know if that worked and he'll be like yeah 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 no like like this is good you know all that um yeah so when he when he was just like yeah i i, I want to make this thing it like wasn't even a question it'll be like oh yeah i'm gonna help like i'm gonna help like let's do it 
That's cool. It, that, I think you forgot our, the first thing we ever made together, which was one of the dead. <laughs> oh man yeah we made uh it was uh what it was just like a couple of years after Shaun of the dead came okay, out yeah right yeah and uh part of like uh one of our media projects in high school was to make uh just make like a short film so mm -hmm. it was us two and then two of our other friends we made a short zombie movie called one of the dead uh <laughs> super great we just like grabbed all the ketchup packets from from the cafeteria we we're like putting it put it on like mickey's face he was one of our zombies uh <laughs> yeah it was super great that lives nowhere on the internet i don't think it ever got put on the internet um no it's on a vhs tape somewhere yeah somewhere <laughs> wow vhs huh yeah old school <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah, it's yeah, yeah that that's that's been, been a little bit of a you know a bit of a while you know kind of predates DVDs for for those who don't know out there right yeah <laughs> <laughs> man that's cool so uh yeah Sam you mentioned that you guys uh, had a, a TV miniseries that ended up on Amazon I'm curious what what was that and can people still find it there uh I don't know if people can still find it on there it it was it it went up I don't know maybe like five years ago okay. uh yeah so that was that was something called uh the starlet and the viper uh mm -hmm. we filmed it with just like a couple of close friends yeah uh and uh yeah it was supposed to be sort of like uh it was mickey doing sort of like a noir uh mm -hmm. just like all like set here and yeah so uh, so it's um it was about like this like kind of like young sort of wannabe actress who is uh, uh, sort of like embroiled in this? Uh, what what was it? It was, uh, it was a murder, right? It was a murder or missing murder of, her, of her husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was the murder of her husband. Uh, nobody can solve the crime, so she kind of like hires this like would be detective, and yeah, they just kind of went around, you know, trying to f trying to figure out, you know, solve the crime here. Yeah, um, the pr pr uh, production kind of fell apart. Yeah, uh, for like. <laughs> specific reasons and stuff but uh this kind of fell apart and so we didn't have an ending and so i just kind of edited it into a mini series that ends on a cliffhanger oh okay <laughs> yeah. nice uh so uh you yeah, mickey if you can tell us a, a little bit about uh, a little bit more about uh, uh lechuza and about the the kickstarter campaign to support that sure um so uh so when I, when I was a kid, my dad would always tell me all these stories about living in Mexico and yeah. uh, and like on, on he lives on a ranch in Mexico and like different places and stuff. And one of them was this, these stories about La, La Chusa, who the, that most of different different people in his family, well, my family have like all these stories. Um, and so he has a story once where he he heard the La Chusa's cry uh, at night and he went to go see what it was and he saw like an owl. And then the closer he got to the owl, the, it seemed like it was getting bigger. And then when he could see the owl's face, it was like wrinkly, like a like an old woman. Right. And uh, and then his dad ran outside with the shotgun and shot it, and it flew away. Ooh. And then like his dad explained to him what it was. And then uh, uh, his dad had a story about it too. And then his dad, his like uncle, has stories about it and stuff. So I've always lived with that like innate fear that i've had to explain to people like when i see an owl i'm like no i don't know I don't, i'm not gonna mess with that thing yeah uh, so uh i wanted i've always wanted to like change to turn that into a a story that i could use and then i had this story already cooked up which was essentially just the craft like a really cool craft movie mm -hmm. um and then i had this idea of turning that that craft movie into inject more like culture into it make it about brujeria like yeah. and, and like that, and so I, I was thinking about what the villain for that movie would look like, and then I had these two different ideas that both involved the culture and both involved, uh, brujeria, both involved, uh, like I, like just sort of like the, the idea of, uh, family, I guess, mm -hmm. and then I just merged them together. Okay. And so that that's what the short is about. The short is about these these. Uh, uh, sisters who all all practice blue all practice like magic and uh their matriarch dies and one of the sisters wants to bring the mother back and tries to do it and the other sisters are unaware of that and um the the lechusa punishes the punishes the sister oh okay wow yeah uh 
You should probably let your sisters know that you're bringing dead people back, right? <laughs> it's just common courtesy, you know? Exactly. Yeah, hey, you know, uh, yeah, you don't want all these uh, unexpected un you know, undead guests at the door. It's like, oh, these are too many mouths to feed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, that that sounds uh, you know, fantastic. You know, you know, and this is something that's that's uh, you know part of the mythology of you know kind of Mexican folklore, and uh, it sounds like it's something that that you grew up with. Uh, reading your your Kickstarter too, uh, Mickey. It sounds like uh, yeah, you were really inspired by Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, you know some of your experiences with that. Uh, going to the theaters, I think, with your your dad. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So th that's a huge uh inspiration for me I, and i've also said that the movie is uh, hereditary meets the evil dead yeah and uh, uh nice. so it's like what, what what i mean by that is essentially the what the first time i so i think the evil dead is the most important indie movie ever made i think it changed okay. i think it's and more than pulp fiction i think it changed what people could do with the amount of money that they had right and, and it it told everyone that what matters is, is your direction and like the energy of a movie right. more so than like the money more so than the effects more so than the acting i guess yeah. even though you know bruce willis i mean not bruce willis uh, bruce campbell's like the best yeah. um <laughs> but it, it sort of gave this new sense of like if you're an artist and you make a movie it doesn't matter what you have right um and hereditary the first time i saw hereditary i went oh horror movies can be family dramas and that's okay mm -hmm. yeah you can you can it's okay to do that and yeah. so i wanted to have a family drama with the that takes it as serious as hereditary does but have it be have it have the energy and the kinetic spirit of the evil dead oh, with man. you know the gore effects and like how crazy it can get and the the intensity and the direction and the yes. yeah i wanted to like merge those two things which i think uh sometimes they can be seen as like polar opposites because of like uh, elevated horror and like B, B horror movie, but I, I don't think though that exists. I, I think you can have both. I, I would agree. Um, I, I also think of, you know, you know, thinking back on like Evil Dead, you know, those limitations, you know, just, just as you, you mentioned, you know, those limitations really can seed, uh, you know, the need for uh, like uh, uh, innovation, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and every time somebody mentions, uh, you know, Evil Dead, I always think of the camera movements, the camera work, you know, all those amazing zoom and, and uh, you know, the, the pans and, and stuff. It's just so cool and uh, so much fun. And, and of course, I'll, I'll watch anything with, uh, you know, Bruce Campbell. So, uh, and, we, and I've seen some stinkers. <laughs> Whenever he's on camera, it's entertaining. Did you watch uh, Black Friday? What's that? Yeah, that was fun. That was, that was fun. Yeah. 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 That was, uh, even his, his silly uh, cameo in the, the last Doctor Strange movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pop up. I was like, what the heck? Whatever. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the highlight of the movie for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. that That's cool. Well, I, yeah, it, it sounds like a really, you know, fun project. Um, yeah, you know, do you guys uh, are you guys uh, you know ready to commence you know production or where where are you guys with with uh, you know organizing and putting this thing together or does it all hinder on on Kickstarter? Yes, yeah, do you want to start with that? Yeah, so we we really took we really took our time sort of like announcing when we were going to do the Kickstarter. Originally, I want to say we wanted to put it out for October of last year. Okay um just different things kind of stopped us from uh from doing that but that really afforded us some time to really like find everybody that we needed for the project yeah. um uh, with mickey being you know in the industry for so long you know he he's already established like kind of a rapport with a couple of different people uh our cinematographer uh for example and so, yeah, it was sort of just like letting everybody get back to us and then us saying like, okay, yeah, like we're, we we want to do this. Uh, tentatively, we were going to do it in March. Now we're shooting for April okay. uh, to shoot. And yeah, it uh, again, like it, this, this sort of time uh, allowed us to find everybody. We, we cast all our actors, 
uh, we got uh, our uh, our musician, you know, our sound editor, you know, all of those things. And yeah, it was essentially like, okay, uh, we're we're all assembled. We're pretty much ready to go. Everybody's game. We're blocking out like dates, you know, trying to figure stuff out. And yeah, so really, it's just the uh, the Kickstarter. You know, we're just we're waiting for you know that final date. You know, and then uh, all the funding can come in, and then we can just get started. Nice. You, you guys got uh, about, uh, I think, uh, 39 or 38 days on that Kickstarter uh, left to go. Yeah. Uh, you, you've you gotten just about a $1,000 or so uh, with a, a $10,000 goal. Can you tell us a little bit about the incentives, you know, for, for people to go and, uh, you know, to participate and contribute? Sure. I can go through them. Uh so uh, we have just a regular bag it and believe it. So a bag it if you believe it. So we have just a special thanks in the credits. Okay. Uh, then we have a digital Latusa short. So we can send, uh, we'll send you the short film when it's done. Uh, we're not actually releasing the short film anytime that I think of, that I can like think in my head because it's going to festivals and then right. I don't know, like we don't know what's going to happen. So um, so th this will be the only time that, people like the only people who get to see it are the people who go to the festivals or the people who back the Kickstarter. Nice. Okay. Uh, we have a, a pledge of 25 bucks, which will get, get you a, let's see. I lost my place. There it is. Uh, we have a collectible like postcard, which is essentially just a print of a still from the, from the film, which is really, which is really neat. Um, and then we have a Q and a with the director. So I guess that's me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I uh, contributed to that one, so I'm happy to pay for another time to talk to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and then we have a limited edition DVD and special features, including okay. uh, including a letter from us. And so that's that'll be the only time the movie is going to exist on like a like physically. Yeah, yeah. So that's so we're, like we're not we're not printing a run of it or anything. It's just going to be whatever the Kickstarters want. Right. Um, and then we have a oh we have a Q and A with the cast and crew. Cool. Uh, so we have a it's called one of us. It's Q and A with the cast and crew. I think that there's going to be multiple of them to see just how many cast and crew we can get on this, and uh, you'll be invited to a virtual cast and crew screening. Nice. Um, I'm 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 looking. It depends. Like it depends on what's going on. But if there's going to be like a screening. If we, if I can get a screening, read, like a physical screening, and the person and people who back this live here, they'd be invited to that too. Yeah. So I need to like figure that out. Uh, it's oh, and I have a five hundred dollar pledge, which is be in the film. We have a uh, we cast everyone, but we have a voice acting that we that like I set aside little parts of voice acting that we could use, uh, especially if people want to be like creepy about it like you have creepy voices and like nice yeah so uh if you want to do like horror voices we have that ready nice. um oh that's cool that's so that, that's one of them and then the other two are just associate producer credit yeah we have six of those and we have one executive producer slash company credit so if somebody wants to co-produce with their company or co-produce with themselves that they'll be an oh, well, they'll mean executive producer and a co-production from the company that's that's if you want to fund the whole thing <laughs> nice wow that's uh that's awesome um yeah the, the uh you've got the um a little trailer uh on there um yeah uh, I, I don't know how you guys uh, went about uh, have you already shot material or was it just uh footage from uh that you've you've accumulated and just yeah uh, so that's a, that's a, a rip reel that's like footage that's like accumulated footage um okay. and then some of it was was stuff that i had from uh, different like things that I've shot that I color graded. Okay. And so uh, it was basically just to give people the idea and the feel of it. And the yeah. music is, is original. And um, so, yeah, I, I was, I really just wanted to see to have people know what they were getting into, like tone wise. Right, right, right. No, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. The, the, the thing that I gravitate towards is, um, is, you know, when it, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, Mexican and uh, folklore is it's not something I'm really privy to or familiar uh, with, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I've, I've seen so many of the, you know, the, the European uh, and uh, American vampires and werewolves and shit. And mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, that's great. It's, it's kind of old hand at this point. 
still love that stuff, but you know, I, I, I want to get exposed to like new cultures and, and things of that nature um, that, that I'm not normally, uh, you know, very familiar with. And I, I think this is, you know, a, a fun introduction, at least for somebody like me. Yeah. And like the, the, a lot of like Mexican uh, folklore and Mexican monsters come from the idea, well, they, they come from like, a lot of them are indigenous Right. Uh, creatures that have sort of survived through colonization by attaching themselves to Christianity and like right. spiritual beliefs and stuff. Mm -hmm, uh, but mm -hmm. some of them, uh, some of them also took, are there because uh, there wasn't much of an industrial revolution during that time in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, children had to sort of be incentivized to not do certain things. And so right. one of the things is, hey, kids, don't play in the river at uh, during the during nighttime and some kids would do that so then uh there's a there's like a story of this woman who drowns you and so for some reason right. for some reason they thought it was hilarious to like tell children about monsters to keep them away instead of just telling them not to do things yeah it's yes. very it's very mean uh but th there's there's that there's i think latusa is a little bit of like don't fuck with dark magic mm -hmm. it's like I get to that. Yeah. Here, I don't do it yeah, yeah. um and uh, oh, this morning I actually figured out a chupacabra thing because I I've always wanted to do chupacabra, but I've never gotten it in my head. Uh, I think it's about isolation. Oh, okay. I think I think chupacabra is about um, that like these because in, in Mexico you used to have these little communities that were fed yes. off of a farm, so you had one farm and you had a community built around the farm, Oh, and okay. then, then they didn't have much contact with other communities. They were just kind of like existing in themselves. But if something attacked the farm, you were cut off and oh. you you were stuck and you, you couldn't really even ask for help. And so like if, if a chupacabra is like if, you, if you're losing cattle, if you're losing goats, if you're losing chickens, uh, that, that's that's your source of food for the town. That's something you can't get back. And right. there wasn't the, there wasn't like a like a like a Ralph's truck coming in to like provide you guys with food. Yeah. And so it's sort of like that isolation fear. So like, uh, what it what it so what it would look like? What a movie about the Triple Cover would look like? It would look like that movie Antlers that came yeah. out a few years yeah. ago. That's yeah. what it would look like. Okay. So well, I'm gonna do that. that? <laughs> when are you producing that? Because that sounds amazing. <laughs> Geez, like, this is the first I'm hearing about it. Now I'm yeah, just kind of like crunching it. numbers. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, yeah, we can do that for yeah. sure. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Sam, your workload just doubled. Hey, you know, job security. <laughs> That's why I keep this guy around. There you go. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, uh, Mickey, that sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, I, I haven't really seen a successful Chupacabra movie. I think the, the last Me time neither. I saw one was uh, like 15 years ago and trauma put it out and it was, it was, uh, yeah, it looked like it was made for about uh, $15, you know, <laughs> um, but, but the, you know, uh, along those lines too, like with Chupacabra uh, folklore, like you, you, you've heard uh, of, of different iterations, like, uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, kind of the, the wolf or, or dog version of that. And then you've, you've got this little, you know, also a, a reptile version of that. Um, yeah, I've, I've never understood how to, how, uh, how to, you know, kind of uh, reconcile either one of those, you know, which ones are accurate. But so many people like, like you see them on those really fun, but awful uh, cryptozoological, um, mm. uh, you know, docuseries, you mm. know, ooh, the Chupacabra. And, and it's always like this, you know, dog that has mange you know uh kind of found dead on the side of the road it's like oh this is a chupacabra no it's a it's a wild dog that has mange that's why it's hairless it's like <laughs> you know, this poor thing probably suffered out in the middle of nowhere it's like you're not doing a very good job with the 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 cryptozoological aspect yeah there. yeah but uh but yeah it's it yeah but stuff like that is so exciting and um and so, yeah, uh, uh, you know, yeah, hearing more about uh, Luchuza and and that folklore and, and bringing that, you know, to um, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to into existence, right? Um, I think will be a, you know, a wonderful way to to kind of share in that that cultural uh, aspect. Um, 
yeah, uh, yeah, it's 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 going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so after Kickstarter, you guys go right into production. Sounds like come come April. Um, do you guys have uh, like storyboards and everything you know situated? Yeah, you know, along with all the um, yeah. The, Nice. Okay. Yeah, we have we have some storyboards. Uh, I can't draw, so I found a uh, like three D program to like to be oh, able cool. to like take screenshots in the three D program, and then awesome. uh, uh, hopefully give it to like a uh, an a person who can draw and be like, can you just like sketch these things? But cool. uh, but it looks it looks really good. They might they might just work by themselves. Um, yeah. But yeah, we we have we have that ready. We have a location. So if you go to our Kickstarter, you'll be able to see pictures right. of the location. And a yeah. video of the location. And dude, when I tell you that uh, we found the location, and I was like, "This can't be that good," and we drove to it. It's like ten minutes away from from this apartment, and we drove to it, and uh, we 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 talked to the person, and like she's really really nice. This is a film studio. It's not her home. She she rents a home out and uses it as a film studio. And uh, we went inside, and it was like the coolest thing ever. Because the, my important, what's important to me is that the walls weren't white. I didn't want right. white walls. Yeah. I wanted like cool. I mean, I wanted like warm tones. Yeah, it's all warm tones. It's all weird stuff. She goes to like flea markets and like uh, I don't know what well, what is it called the when people die and you sell their stuff. Oh, oh like estate like sales. Sale. Yeah, yeah, like estate sales. And she just buys random things that look scary to her, and she puts it in the home. Cool. <laughs> and then so. So like you can just go in and it's really creepy and uh, it's really fun. I really liked it, and she's really game for this. She like, she 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 let us like use the pictures in the video and stuff, uh, awesome. even though like even though like we haven't actually bought the like like put out the, the space because uh -huh. we don't have the money. Uh, but no, she's she's really game for this and we really like it and it's it's gonna elevate the whole thing. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, but what's really cool is that she also let us like measure everything because um, something that I think the Kickstarter needs more like text of, which I'll talk to Sam about that later. But um, we we have a we have a, a disabled producer and a disabled actress right. because a, a character in the in the in La Chusa, uh, um is 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 a wheelchair user, mm -hmm. and so that was really important to me because. Um, uh, well, my 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 mom was a wheelchair user for most of my life, and she, I remember having these discussions with her about. Um, she's like, it's really weird because sometimes she feels like she's not in control of her life, and she she tries to talk herself that she is, yeah. but then someone literally has to like push her somewhere. So like, right. it, she's it's like that kind of like a very literal representation of how you feel. Yeah. Um, but she, uh, I wanted to take that conversation that we had. And like, sort of, like, make it like, like, put it like in a literal place in in the in the short. So like, when when they when the girls are being punished, they're being punished based on their fears. Yeah. And her fear is that she doesn't have control of her life. And so, mm -hmm. uh, we show that very literally. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really wanted there to be uh like, but I, but I wanted the studio to be accessed by her. I didn't want to have any issues. And so we like measured everything. And we talked to the we, we got a producer that's also disabled that's willing to call me out on my shit. Hmm. So like nice. a lot of, a lot of times like directors can have like yes men with them, right? So and so like uh like a lot of times I'm like what about this and uh, Val would be like no that's that that doesn't work and she tells me why it doesn't work and I'm like oh, okay cool or like I write the script and she's like yeah you're you're down talking to this person and I'm like oh okay I get it yeah. So yeah. I think it's really cool, and I think that was it was a really good, like, gut decision I had to like go with the person that kind of fights you on things. Yeah. Um, but the, that's that's something that that is that is not wholly present in the language of the Kickstarter, but I kind of mm -hmm. want to have it there more. Yeah. No. That uh, that's I think that's a great thing. You know, one representation, right? You know, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, too, I think story-wise, something like that would, I could only imagine somebody that's, you know, stuck in a wheelchair in a horror movie, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, one of the go-tos that I think of is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. You know, that, that poor guy that was, you know, kind of stuck following his friends around, you know, basically in the middle of nowhere at the, yeah, and then at the Sawyer's house. 
yeah, he's screwed. That poor guy. I mean, that that thing to live vicariously through him, that has got to be even more terrifying. Yeah, uh, and, and we really wanted this to be sort of like that idea of not being in control of your life. And yeah. then as, as it goes on, learn that you are in control of your life. And right. you can be. Right. And uh, the, the short kind of has that, uh, but the feature really has that. The feature's done. Yeah. The feature's written. So, yeah. So like the the so like the short was made after the feature, the short right. was written after the feature as like this weird uh, little. Uh, we we like sort of tried to take everything about the feature and stick it in the short. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe like in a uh, yeah. Well, as a short, like uh, kind of uh, not only a proof of concept but uh, an expanded trailer of sorts. But still, yeah, yeah. Still telling a complete story, right? Yeah. It's nice. a, it's, it tells it, it tells the story and it uh, and it leaves you wanting more. Yeah. Well, good. Cool. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Um, and you know, yeah, Mickey, with with your background in distribution, uh, have you seen uh, a number of projects? You know, like the one th that you designed, kind of come along where you've got the short, the proof of concept, and then it's like, hey, you know, these filmmakers want to go out and do a much more expanded version of. Actually, I never thought about that. Uh, I have, but uh, a lot, a lot of my distribution work is like social issue films. It's not horror. Oh, okay. Uh, but I have seen that. So uh, th there's, I've seen like a film. Uh, there, there's like films about homelessness where someone has yeah. gone out. They filmed a film for like 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and then they, uh, and then they have it, and then they get the money to film like a bigger movie. And then when we distribute the DVD, there's a special features in it that has right. the original short film in it right so i've seen that a few times um and i've seen it a few times from people who you wouldn't think would need short films to do it mm -hmm. so i've seen it a few times from uh like well-known documentarians okay um, i forgot his name but um <laughs> yeah you could you, you, you see it a few times and that, that so I, it is like a proven thing like it works yeah. and people yeah. do care because people care that you can deliver yeah yeah right yeah, they want to see finished projects. You know, of course, you know, people contributing to the Kickstarter, they want to see the, the finished project because uh, I think they also want to feel that they've participated and contributed to, to creating great art. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and I think uh, I think a really, I, I actually think horror is one of the best places to do this. Mm -hmm. And like we, it, it's been a little difficult to get started. Like it's been kind of like, uh, not upsetting, but it's been kind of like a, uh, like like down to like to like not not just get all the money like in two days, but uh, <laughs> but I do think that the horror community is like the best place to do this because they they back each other up and they really like yeah. indie stuff and they like they're really right. into like community. I just I feel like maybe we haven't tapped into that enough, and so I want to try to tap into it more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there uh, yeah us as a um, a horror convention. Um, I, I've always, uh, you know, found that the, you know, the fans and, and the people that come out are just so passionate, like across the board in, in anything that's horror related. They want to learn what it is. They want to, you know, they, 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 you know, they kind of crave it. Um, and, you know, doing events, uh, I've, I've gone to a number of like comic book and, and pop culture events where it's like hot and cold. Yeah. There might be a lot of people there, but you know, the, the fandom is, you know, they're either hot for a thing or they're, they're not, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's, it can be hit and miss, but uh, I think the, the horror community is more concentrated and, and way more supportive and passionate. And, uh, and so, and, and also with horror film and horror genre, I think it's the most accessible, you know, genre there is. Um, and it, it tends to stick around as well. It, there's, there's always that air of longevity, um, you know, whereas you, you might see like the, the, the amazing uh, indie drama that, that wins all the awards one year and then next year, you never hear about it. You yeah. know? It doesn't yeah. hit that zeitgeist, but horror films, big or small, they just they stick around and and somebody you know ten years from now is going to be talking about yeah you know, uh, Lechuza and uh, you know all the things that uh, that they really you know dug about uh, about your film. I want to have midnight screenings in yes. Mexico City. <laughs> yes, definitely. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's one thing that uh, I feel is kind of missing from uh, you know culture these days is is like going out to the theater, and going to those midnight screenings. Yeah. You know? There's there's just not too many of those those type of films you know around the the kind of you know art meets horror or, or art meets a uh, grindhouse type film you know yeah. um, so it, and it, it's and also you know like when you guys get this made watching your film with an audience what an awesome experience you know that is going to be I'm I'm kind of envious for you guys you know because uh, I I think. Uh, I think that's that's one of the the greatest places to to build camaraderie and build your audience and build your community too. Yeah, we're we're, we're excited. Um, uh, so, Sam, I realized we didn't talk about Quetzalcoatl, <laughs> so we um we 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 uh, fundraised the comic, so we we yeah. wrote a comic, uh, we fundraised the whole volume, so we fundraised for five issues. Oh so my we've god! Done like one and a half. So we, we, we've written all of them. They're done. Our work kind of is done on them. We just kind of have to like approve things and everything. So the artist is drawing and like nice. coloring and everything. Yeah. So yeah. that'll be out in like next year. That's uh, that is awesome. You're you're talking to a a, a comic book guy because I write. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, nice. I'll, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you a digital copy of the first. Yes, issue. please. I I would I would absolutely love that. Um. I don't yeah, have any physicals on me, but I'll send you the, gen- the digital one. Yeah, no, that's that's easier. Uh, um, yeah, is, is that uh, potentially like an incentive on the on the Kickstarter campaign that you can add as well? I haven't thought oh, of that. We like, didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but potentially, I mean, because because like they're they're sort of like two different uh, like genres. Like we we started writing Kitsukoto as like uh, as like a superhero story. Okay. And then it kind of slowly morphed into something that's like still has those like super heroics, but yeah. it is more about like a person sort of like bringing together the community, you know, nice. like kind of, uh, uh, you know, honoring like their background right. and their culture within like this like modern, uh, you know, like the modern context, you know, and yeah, but like you know, like that's 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 also kind of like what we're doing here, you know, with like you know, Bujeria, you know, sort of like uh, it's making a comeback. Like I I work in a bookstore, and um, I can't tell you like the New Age section, just like uh, the New Age and spirituality section, just keeps on like growing and growing. And it's not just stuff like like reading tarot, you know, or right. or like astrology anymore. Like no, it's like going like in depth, specific about you know, like specific cultures and regions and like that particular type of magic Mm -hmm. um and yeah like so so there's there's a little bit of a crossover so you know yeah that that could that could be something that will maybe like you know push it like towards like like the the latter half of of uh of our kickstarter yeah also also um um i don't want to sound boring because it is it, it, it is a comic about it's essentially Moon Knight if Moon Knight was a brown woman and had oh. a had a Mayan god in her head. Ooh, that's instead of like an Egyptian god. It's like a Mayan. It's like a Mayan. Uh, it's Quetzalcoatl who's like the dragon. Yeah. Oh, who was like great. A, okay. Who was like a, a god in her head that's passed down to her family. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, so it sounds like there is a, a bit of a supernatural aspect to it. You know. Uh, yeah, so the, potentially there could be like a little bit of a horror aspect. Regardless, uh, I, I still read, you know, superhero comics all the time. So, yeah, I, I freaking love that. Uh, and that, that sounds absolutely amazing. So I, I can't I can't wait to, to read that. Um, yeah. The, uh, you know, Sam, you were talking about the, you know, the magic aspect uh, that's that's coming back that, that kind of ties into, um, you know, some of the uh, uh, wellness and, and new age stuff, if, if I'm accurate, you know, mm-hmm. uh, shoot that down if I'm completely wrong. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, um, it, is, is that something that also plays into like the, the folklore of, of the film or um, as well? Cause, cause uh, the, the girls in there, the sisters, yeah, they're, they're, they dabble in, in you know, the, the black magics, right? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like um 
sort of like how uh how you were mentioning earlier you know this like you know still like being into you know like like the the european uh sort of uh angle of you know like monsters mythology vampires yeah. you know like those you know those those creatures and stories have stood sort of the test of time uh when mickey started writing this um he hadn't seen the craft before outside of like movie trailers and like maybe some scenes actually, ah. actually to date, I still don't think he's seen the craft. Uh, really? I saw it. I saw it two years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I saw it. I saw it at a, like a, what is it? Like when you want to go outside to watch movies on the grass. Oh, um, I saw it. I was like two yeah, days before part. Halloween. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I saw, I saw, I've seen it, but it was like way after I wrote the feature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, because you you wrote the feature. This is this has sort of been in development for for yeah a couple of years. Uh, so yeah, I think it, it you know it's it's also it it's sort of our way to uh, show just like a different kind of uh, uh, you know magic, you know, a different kind yeah. of practice. You know, it's like well, there's well, there's crossover. Right. Um, you know, this is still something that's inherently, you know, like Mexican, you know, inherently like indigenous to, you know, specific people. So, you know, um, that's, that's sort of the thing too. I'm seeing more books that are, that are about, you know, like Brujeria and like sort of the blending of like, Hey, like we're like, we're living, you know, within America, but, you know, trying to bring the practices of the old world, you know, back you know, keep like keep it alive in a sense. So that's that's sort of something that we were that we were shooting for here. And then also, you know, uh, the Lechusa, you know, that's that's you know this like ancient folkloric creature, you know, from our from our background. And you know, I you know I think it deserves you know to be you know talked about in the same light as like mm -hmm. a werewolf, you know, or yeah. uh, Spring Hill Jack or something like that, you know. Yeah, when uh, when I saw some of the designs on the Kickstarter campaign uh, campaign page, um, you know, I, I you know my association right away was uh, to the Russian uh, Baba Yaga. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was just like, oh wow, I wonder if this is you know has some similarities. Talking to you guys and talking about brujas and stuff, it, it sounds like yeah, there there are those similarities uh, definitely. And you know, and, and for like Russian kids too. Uh, you know, Baba Yaga was also a cautionary tale. Hey, don't go do this. Don't go into the woods. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, stay the fuck away, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, uh, well, uh, like, you know, how I said before that, uh, just that these creatures sort of survived by attacking them, attaching themselves to Christianity and stuff. Right. Um, like, Brujeria survived by attaching itself to, to like Christian Christianity and customs. Like, yeah. literally, uh, 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 the 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 Virgin of Guadalupe um, mm -hmm. survived because it turned into the Virgin of Guadalupe. It wasn't that originally. It was mm -hmm. a it was a Mesoamerican deity, and it survived because it sort of attached itself to this idea of the Virgin of Guadalupe. So Virgin of Guadalupe are like three different things. Yeah, um, and like like the like sort of rituals like like rubbing the egg. You've seen you've seen people like rubbing the egg on uh, to like rid themselves of like sickness or something I like that so. that is that's yeah. inherently mexican and it's inherently um uh uh brujeria but it's attached to like christianity for some reason yeah yeah uh, but it's it's a sacrifice that's what it is you're sacrificing the, the egg yeah and, uh so oh, stuff okay. like, so like stuff like that that people might not realize is and like herbs and like uh like the, there's a there's this thing about um like burning certain herbs that smell really nice yeah, and you're home to like attract like good things and stuff, and like that's essentially a cauldron, uh, but it survived because it, oh. it sort of like sort of snuck into Christianity, and then it's a it's like these things that Christians do that's that aren't in the Bible. There's right. just things that you pass down with your family, right? Well, it's yeah, like uh, like a lot of yeah Christianity also like uh, some of the the, the pagan rit rituals too. Yeah, of, uh, yeah, of Europe and everything kind of got folded into like uh, Christmas for one, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that, that was completely, you know, pagan ritual. So was Easter. Um, and, and then uh, to see how uh, other cultures have, you know, kind of enveloped that because, you know, one, one thing about uh, a lot of uh, like colonialism and, uh, and, you know, uh, you know, kind of Christian uh, uh, 
you know, enveloping of other cultures too, is, is like taking the gods of, of old, of, uh, older, um, you know, societies. And, and then they, they somehow, those gods end up becoming like the demons and the devils, you know, mm-hmm. and, and the new ones and, and, uh, you know, become those, those, uh, strange cautionary, ta- uh, you know, um, tales. So, uh, perhaps that's, that's something that happened to, uh, Lechuza. Yeah. And I've, I've heard, uh, like, I, I know people that that like swear up and down that uh, La Llorona is in the Bible, and she's not. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's, just, it's just an indigenous tale of this of this like scorn woman. And I would love to do a La Llorona movie, but I think I I'd love to produce one. I think it should be done by uh by a Mexican woman because it's very much like female rage. Right, right, like, like right. It's, it's no one has ever used a female rage angle. They've always used the like. Like the pain and the, the pain and like angle. the grief, yeah. But it's like a grief angle, but no, it's rage, and that that's that's mm-hmm. why that's when it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's true. I I, I always find uh, like uh, uh, in general, like uh, uh, when women are directing uh, things or writing stories, like there's there's an air of sincerity that uh, uh, I don't find with a lot of uh, male uh, counterparts. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the stories like that, stories that are inherently, yeah, uh, are inherently about like uh, female, like, yep, yeah, yes. like like stories, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah, most definitely. So um, I was really upset with the curse of light. I don't know, maybe is what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> uh, guys. Yeah, we're just about out of time, but uh, you know, I want to say, yeah, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, for everybody that's that's tuned in, of course. You know, after this broadcast, make sure you go to uh, you know, lechuzafilm.com and contribute to the Kickstarter on there. You know, help these young filmmakers, you know, do their their this fantastic passion project and uh, you know create a, you know wonderful art. Is is there anything that uh, we haven't touched on that you guys want to you know touch on? No, I think I think we covered I think we covered a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, yeah, make sure you guys uh, stay in contact and let us know how things are developing and, and if uh, if we can lend a hand. Uh, obviously, this is going to go out, and uh, you know you can uh, you use this to help uh, you know bring more attention uh, to your project. Uh, and uh, yeah, we we definitely wish you guys all the, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Most definitely. Uh, stick around for a few minutes uh, while we sign off. But uh, again, uh, everybody that's tuned in, you know, make sure you go to uh, luchuzafilm.com, contribute to their Kickstarter, get these guys off to a, an awesome start uh, making their, their short film, and then the feature film, and then the trilogy, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hopefully this will be like a kind of an interconnected uh, universe. Cinematic universe. Yes. Like Cinematic the, universe. That's yeah, in right now, like right? The Conjuring. Not Marvel Studios. Like The Conjuring. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, that, that would be pretty exciting uh, to, to see. And then, then, then we can all say, I knew Mickey and Sam when, way back. <laughs> oh, cool. Guys, thanks again for, for coming on and being so generous with your time and, and uh, sharing with us all the cool things that you guys are working on. Hey, thank you. Thank you for thank having so us. We, we appreciate that. Oh, yes, most definitely. And, of course, uh, to everybody who tuned in uh, today on this, uh, well, here in Colorado, it's kind of sunny. Uh, there just turned out to be an overcast just now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in. And, of course, uh, to our sponsors, to Mutiny Information Cafe. If you're going to start a revolution, make sure you're caffeinated, like I am. And, of course, Hellfire Entertainment. Thanks for rebroadcasting us on your social media. And our friends at Groovy DV. And, uh, of course, uh, Alien Donut Films to Bill and Angela over there. And uh, my producers, uh, Lily Fisher, Stefan Santa Cruz, and Amanda Armstrong. And to all of you that tuned in, thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Uh, you know, make sure to help each other out and uh, during these tough times. And of course, uh, stay creepy and go to these guys' Kickstarter campaign and support Amazing Arts. It's been scrolling down below the screen this whole time.
damn it. So take a screenshot of that <laughs> and, uh, you know, go help them out. It's well worth it. All right, guys, have a good night. We'll see you soon. Take care.